Welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are going to create a basic Python app and we are going to upload our app to GitHub using Git. It's going to be a beginner friendly tutorial and I'm going to show you all the steps step by step. Let's start coding. Let's start by creating a Python file like let's say rag paper scissors dot pi. We are going to create a really really simple rag paper scissors game for sharing it in the GitHub. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say import random and then I'm going to set options list rug paper and scissors and then I'm going to say play again and it's going to be true. I'm going to use it for a while loop. Then I will say while play again user choice is going to be input enter a choice rock paper scissors like this and at the end i'm going to use dot lower for using the lowercase letters and then i'm going to check for the invalid input so this is going to be like if the user isn't enters like rock paper or scissors it's going to raise an error like we will say if user choice Actually, there is a typo. Let me quickly fix that. Use a choice, not in options. Then print invalid choice. Please try again. And we will say continue like this. And then what we are going to do is we will say computer choice. And it will be like random.choice options. And then we will print the choice like print we will use an f string you choose and we will give user choice and then we will say computer choose and then we will say actually one all in there we will say computer choice like this great so now we are going to define the game logic like it's going to be if user choice accused the computer choice then it's going to be print it's a tie like this and then we will say we will set play again as true so what i want is i want it to continue if the user and computer selects the same thing and if it's a tie Otherwise, I want it to end, like if the user wins or the computer wins, then the game is going to stop, but if it's a tie, it's going to continue. So for that, I set the play again for true for the tie, but for the other two, I'm going to set it to false. So I will say else if, then user choice, accused the rock, and computer choice, accused the scissors or user choice accused the paper and computer choice accused the rock or user choice accused the scissors and actually we need to write it inside like this computer choice accused the paper so in this cases we are going to say print you win then we will set the play again as false okay at the last step what we are going to do is we will say else print you lose then we will say play again as false great our app is ready so let's play our game i'm going to make it run and let's play it from terminal i will say rock then I lost. Great. I'm going to make it rerun like this. Then I'm going to say paper. It says you win. I'm trying a tie right now. I will say paper again. It's a tie and it asks for the replay. Great. Great. It's working smoothly. So now what we are going to do is we are going to create a requirements file. It's really essential if you are working with teammates for setting the environments like everyone can use the different version of the random library and you can create a virtual environment 
with your version. So what you are going to do is you are going to say requirements txt and in here we only use the random library so what i will say is actually random comes pre-built so we don't need to do that but for just showing you i'm going to say import pandas as pd and let's say we used pandas in our app so what i'm going to do is i will say pip show pandas actually since i'm using mac i will say pip3 and actually we can see the version 203 so in here i need to write pandas equals to 203 and if you use other libraries you need to add them like this for working with teammates because in real world applications these library versions can really matter like for example in my cases i use the open ai libraries different versions in my all different apps so make sure to write a requirements file like this so after creating this now what we are going to do is i'm going to get to the github page so just for the clarity git is the version control system software and github is a cloud-based platform that where you store your code so you need to install the git to your computer you can easily install it by typing install git to the google and after that you can come to the github open an account then you can create a new repository like this and let's give a random name like example and you can add description too it's going to be a public one then you can also add a readme file then i'm going to say create a repository great after this operation what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the link in here i'm going to copy this just copy this and then what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to close this one and I'm going to get back to the VS code. So after this operation, I'm going to save my files, requirements and Iraq paper scissors pi. Then you can just check if you have git in your system. You install this successfully by typing something like git info or it says git help. You can say git help and if you can see comments like this in the git help, you installed git successfully. Okay, now let's push this to the GitHub. So what we're going to do is make sure that you are at the same directory with your code. You can say ls. If you are in the Mac, you can say the directory like this. If you are in Windows, it's going to list the files in your current directory and you can navigate through the system using CD, change directory, etc. Great. So we can see that when I say ls requirements and rock paper scissors so we are in the description that we wanted great so I'm going to push this to git so what I'm going to do at the first step is I'm going to initialize the git in local file so what I'm going to say is git init initialize great after this what I'm going to do is I will say git add and I'm going to add both of the files. Like you can see their name are green right now. I'm going to add two of them. So I'm not going to change anything in here. If you want to add all the files in the directory, you can use dot like this and you're going to add them like this. Then we need to write a commit message. Like we are going to create a comment. Like I will say get comment message. Let's say like first edition. And let's say example and I'm going to set this and we can see that the cover changed since we use the comment then what we are going to do is we are going to add the remote repository like what we are going to do is we copied the link remember we will say git remote add and we will say origin then I'm going to paste the URL I just copied from the web so in here I will say enter and we added it successfully. The last step is going to be pushing these files, pushing the comments to the GitHub. I will say git push origin main. And we are going to see that actually I will say hello to this. It navigated me to the, this website. You can just say authorize Visual Studio code in here. And I'm going to get back to the VS code. Okay, since we have a readme file, in the audio description in the repository we created it 
We need to pull that file firstly and then push. So what we are going to do is we will say git pull. We already added the remote repository so we don't need to repeat that. We will say git pull origin main. And after this operation we are going to see that we have a file in here like requirements and python file. Now we can make the push like let's do git branch main like this. And after this what we are going to do is let's repeat the steps for the clarity we will say git add dot for adding the files then i will say git comment message like new message it was the message like this and after this what we are going to say is git push origin main like this and okay what we can do is i will say git push origin main and then i will say force now we are going to see that we pushed our files to the github repository we have. Let's get back to this page. So when we come back to our repo, we can see that our files are added. Like we can check the comments, new message, example to first edition. Like we added it like three times. And then we can see our files in here. Like we have the requirements, txt and rock, paper, scissors.py. Just going to check this file real quick. Yeah, it's the code that we wrote and it's on a remote repository. Now everyone can work with this file and it can be used for the team collaboration in terms of development. Like you can develop apps together with your teammates using Git and GitHub version control systems. It also allows you to track the versions of your app. Like if you want to make a change in here, what you are going to do is you are going to pull this, like the code that we used for pulling you are going to take that files in your local system. You are going to make the changes and you are going to repush the files. Like when you repush and it's going to be merged in the original branch, you are going to see that the original track of the app is going to change since you changed some code and someone merged that. So it was all for the Git GitHub version control tutorial. It was like a really, really basic one. I can also record more comprehensive videos like how you can use the version control system, what are the pull requests, merge and etc. You can just type in the comments if you want something like that, something like get course, github course. I can do that and I will be really happy if you can like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video. I'm sharing two or three new videos every week about data science and python programming. You can subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I shared a free data science bootcamp where I teach Python, Pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib, Plotly, Seaborn and Scikit-learn with three projects. The video is about 7 hours and it's completely free. You can just reach to that video from the cards of this video or the link in the description.